All right, we're working with the difference quotient. Number one, we've got f of x equals one over x plus two. How do we find the difference quotient? Well, remember, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, this is our difference quotient. Remember, subtract is the difference, dividing is the quotient, altogether, that's the difference quotient, right? And if you take the limit as h approaches zero, we'll just take it one step further, what you're finding is f prime of x, which is the derivative, which remember, the derivative is a formula for the slope, okay, at a point. So it's the instantaneous rate of change. So for number one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow this difference quotient formula. And remember, whatever's in the parentheses, that goes in for x on the right side of the equation, okay? So that's the way functions work. So we've got one over x plus h plus two minus f of x. Now f of x is our original equation here, our original function, which is the one over x plus two, all divided by h, okay, so that's our difference quotient. But the question that students have oftentimes is, well, you know, where do I go from here? Well, you can see we've got a complex fraction, meaning we have fractions within a fraction. We have to get rid of that complex fraction by clearing the denominators. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the numerator by x plus h plus two times x plus two, and the denominator by x plus h plus two times x plus two. Now this is like over one, this is like over one, right? Because you know anything can be written in, divided by one to write it as a fraction. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to multiply this to the numerator and this to the denominator. And because we're dividing by the same thing, you know, this quantity here that's like multiplying by one, it doesn't change the overall value, it just changes the way that it looks. So if we take this and we distribute it to this first fraction, See how the x plus h plus two cancels numerator and denominator, and we're just left with x plus two times one, which is x plus two. Okay, minus, when we distribute this fraction to this um, second fraction here, you can see the x plus two's cancel, see numerator and denominator, and we're just left with x plus h plus two. Now, notice how I kept that in parentheses, that's important. And then in the denominator, we just have h times this whole quantity x plus h plus two times x plus uh, two. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify here. I'm gonna distribute the negative, okay, into the parentheses, so that's gonna give us, uh, let's see, negative x minus h minus two. So the x's are gonna cancel, the two's are gonna cancel, because one's positive, one's negative, and we're left with negative h in the numerator, and you can see that these h's are gonna cancel, Okay, so now what we're left with is just negative one in the numerator. This is your difference quotient. If you're just simplifying, you can leave it at, at that stage right there, but if you wanna take it one step further uh, to find the derivative, we would then take the limit as h approaches zero. If we put zero in for h, that's gonna to go to zero, and you can see we have x plus two times x plus two, which is negative one over x plus two squared, and that's gonna be your derivative. So depending on where you're at, you know, with learning about the difference quotient, whether it's um, finding the derivative or just stopping at, you know, uh, simplifying that difference quotient, you can do it either way. Okay, number two, we've got f of x equals square root of x minus three. So same process, working with the difference quotient, whatever's in the parentheses goes in for x on the right. Okay, so what we have is we have x plus h now, minus three, minus, f of x, so f of x is our original function here, so square root of x minus three, all divided by h, okay? So now what we wanna do is we want to rationalize the numerator, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by the conjugate. So if this was a minus here, we're gonna multiply by the same quantity in the numerator, x plus h minus three, plus now, square root of x minus three. Whatever you do to the numerator, you wanna uh, do the same thing to the denominator, okay? If this was a plus, then I would make these minus. Okay, so it's the opposite sign in between. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply these together, these two binomials. And so you can see whenever you multiply a square root times itself, you just get the quantity underneath that square root, okay? And then here what happens is the inner uh, two quantities and the outer two quantities, they're gonna cancel because see how one's negative and one is positive? So they're gonna cancel each other out. And then the last term times the last term, uh, we've got a square root times a square root, which again, whatever is underneath is what you're gonna be ending up with. A negative times a positive is a negative. Okay, so put that in parentheses. All divided by h times this denominator. So that's x plus h uh, minus three plus square root of x minus three. 
Okay, so now let's see, if we distribute this negative in here, we get <clears throat> negative x plus three, and you can see the x's are canceling, the negative three and the positive three are canceling, and we're just left with h in the numerator. But notice how that h in the numerator is gonna cancel with the h in the denominator, and we're just left with one over square root of x plus h minus three plus square root of x minus three. Now you could stop there if you're just working with the difference quotient, but if you're trying to find the derivative, you wanna take that limit as h approaches zero. If I put zero in for h, that's gonna cancel that out, and you can see we have square root of x minus three plus another square root of x minus three, which is one over two times the square root of x minus three, and that's your derivative. If you wanna take it further, you can rationalize by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square, square root of x minus three, but we'll just leave it uh, at that for right now. Okay, in our third example, f of x equals x squared minus two x, we're gonna do that same process. Whatever's in the parentheses is gonna go in for x on the right. Here we've got two x's on the right, so we have to put it in for both of these x's. We're gonna get uh, x plus h squared minus two times x plus h minus f of x. Now f of x is this original equation here. Make sure you put it in parentheses, okay? So you take it as a group, all divided by h. Okay, so now what we wanna do is, you don't wanna just um, square both of these uh, terms here, you wanna foil this out. So x plus h squared is really like x plus h uh, times another x plus h, right? Because squared, you've got two of them. And then distribute the negative two, negative two x minus two h, distribute the negative here, negative x squared plus two x, all divided by h. Okay, now if we multiply this out, we're gonna get x squared plus two h x, plus h squared. So notice that hx on the inside, um, xh on the outside gives us the middle term, 2hx. Okay, so now you can see we've got uh, negative x squared and positive x squared, those cancel. Uh, let's see, we've got, um, let's see what else do we have here? We've got, um, let's see the 2x and the negative 2x, which are canceling. And we're left with 2hx plus h squared minus 2h all divided by h. Now notice there's an h in each one of these terms in the numerator. If we factor it out, we get 2x plus h minus two, all divided by h. Now you can see those h's are canceling, and this is your difference quotient, 2x plus h minus two. You can leave it like that, but if you wanna take it one step further to find the derivative, we take the limit as h approaches zero. So this is gonna to go to zero, and so now we just have 2x minus two, and that's your derivative, which remember is a formula for finding the slope at any point along the curve. So if you wanna see more examples with the difference quotient, follow me over to that video right there, and uh, we'll do some more examples. I'll see you in the next video.